In this video, we'll discuss about anatomical pulleys. Guys, please do watch the videos completely so that you won't miss the exact concept of biomechanics in each and every topic. Okay, let's start guys. First, as we start in every video, first is the definition. What is an anatomical pulley? Okay. When the direction of pull of a muzzle is altered, then the bone or bony prominences causing the deflection forms an anatomical pulley. I repeat the definition guys. When the pull of a muzzle, when the direction of pull, when the direction of pull of a muzzle is altered, then the bone or bony prominences which causing this deflection forms an anatomical pulley. Anatomical pulleys are nothing but the bony prominences which causes the deflection of the muzzle. Okay. A pulleys change the direction. They only change the direction without changing the magnitude, the amount of force applied. They only change the direction guys. They won't change the amount of the force which is applied to that particular segment. Okay. Now, the change in action line caused by the anatomical pulleys causes the muscles uh, cause uh, results in increasing the ability of that particular muscle to produce the greater amount of torque okay now we will take these examples this is the humerus okay and this is the glenoid cavity now this is the deltoid muscle which inserts at the this is the middle fibers of the deltoid middle fibers of deltoid now the middle uh, the deltoid muscle inserts at the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus and this middle fibers takes origin from the lateral border of the acromion process of the scapula now this diagram is a schematic representation of the muscle force which is produced by the middle fibers of the deltoid if the muscle acts in a straight line that is between the origin the, uh, sorry this is the origin and insertion see guys if the muscle acts in a straight line this uh, this is the representation okay this is the straight line in which uh, between the origin between the origin and insertion okay now let us come back to this uh, this uh, schematic representation in this as the deltoid muscle passes the actual glenohumeral joint it is actually wrapped around the uh, round head of the humerus and the acromion and this humerus and the acromion causes the deflection of the uh, fibers and results in, resulting in a force vector that is FMS that is a muscle force vector in this direction okay so the humeral head and acromion process acts as anatomical pulley okay now this is the joint axis guys okay here this is the joint axis now in this diagram this is the force vector which is acting in this direction between the origin and insertion the perpendicular distance between the forces and uh, joint axis 
that is a line joining between the force vector and the joint axis is known as moment arm so in this the moment arm is very small okay the distance is very small whereas if you see here due to the deflection caused by the humeral head and the acromion process the moment arm that is from the joint axis to the force vector is greater okay compared to this the moment arm is greater in this okay so the action line and the direction of the muscle force vectors are significantly different in these two schematic representations although the point of application although the point of application and the magnitude of forces are same this indicates that the point of application is same in these two diagrams and also the magnitude but the action line and the direction of the force vectors muscle force vectors are different muscle force vector in this diagram is in in this direction and in this it is deflected at an angle okay now we'll see what are the functions of anatomical pulleys okay the first function is the function of any anatomical pulley is to redirect the force to make a task easier in this case it's the abduction is the task which makes easier by deflecting the action line of a muzzle the action line of a muzzle in this case the further away from the joint axis by deflecting the uh, action line of a muzzle further away from the joint axis this is the joint axis then it results in increased moment arm of that muscle force as in this case the moment arm is very smaller in this case the moment arm is very larger as the moment arm increases it results in production of greater torque even though the applied force is of same magnitude in these two cases okay now see uh, when the deltoid muscle without any deflection in this diagram is acting in a straight line okay it produces a torque a lesser torque or in some uh, in some cases no torque at all okay here it produces a greater torque torque is nothing but the strength of the rotation produced by the force couple and it is the product of the magnitude of the one of the forces and the shortest distance between them guys i explained clearly about the torque in the torque video please do watch it okay just for the understanding purpose i'll just write the equation okay torque is equal to force into distance this torque distance is known as a moment arm though so the torque equation can be rewritten as force into moment arm okay now the middle deltoid in this diagram muscle produces abduction motion at a, at the glenohumeral joint with very less force okay this is the anatomical pulley with respect to the uh, middle deltoid muscle okay the classic example of anatomical pulley in a human body is patella okay patella is the largest sesamoid bone in a human body sesamoid bone okay now we'll see this diagram and this is the femur these are the quadriceps muscle quadriceps muscles group okay this is the quadriceps tendon this is the patellar tendon okay now the quadriceps tendon lie parallel to that of the femur okay 
and uh, and uh, along with the quadriceps muscles okay now the quadriceps tendon inserts at the superior pole of the patella and and it continues on the surface of the patella and continues as a patellar tendon and this patellar tendon takes origin from the inferior pole of the patella and inserts at the tibial tuberosity of the tibia now this is the axis axis of rotation which is located on the lateral condyle of the femur now the line of pull of the quadriceps muscle on the left foot segment uh, before that uh, if you remove the patella if you remove the patella if you think that the patella is not there then the line of pull of the quadriceps on the left foot segment will follow the patellar tendon will follow the patellar tendon in this direction okay and it is parallel to that of the left foot segment if you extend this it is parallel to that of the tibia and fibula okay so the moment arm here it is a joint lining from the joint axis to the force vector this force vector is denoted as fms this is a force vector exerted by the quadriceps muscle group hence the moment arm here is very small okay now if you take this example here the same these are the quadriceps muscle group this is the patella this is the axis which is located on the axis of rotation located on the lateral condyle of the femur this is the patella tendon the patella is embedded in the quadriceps tendon and it pushes the tendon away from the femur away from the femur okay it pushes the tendon away from the femur in this direction okay so the action line uh, or the fo force vector is deflected at an angle with respect to that of the patella tendon in this direction and when we draw the moment arm from the joint axis okay so when compared to this when the force vector which acts in the vertical plane uh, following the patellar tendon when the patella is uh, removed so the moment arm is very small and in this case when the uh, uh, patella pushes the quadriceps tendon away from the femur it causes the deflection of the uh, force vector of the exerted by the quadriceps muscle and in this case the moment arm is larger hence greater torque can be produced in this case with less force greater torque torque is equal to force into distance force into distance is equal to moment arm greater the moment arm greater the moment arm greater the torque okay okay this is uh, example of the anatomical pulley with respect to the patella guys okay now this is all about anatomical pulleys okay the definition we have studied about the anatomical pulleys with respect to humerus and the acromion this is with respect to the patella and we have studied about the functions of the anatomical pulleys if you like the video please subscribe to my channel P guys please do watch my videos till the end so that you won't miss the concept okay thanks for watching guys thank you